Our most gracious and wonderful Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we have alternate means to be able to meet and to be able to worship you and to continue to do your service. We thank you that everybody is uh, able to uh, gather here today and listen to this message. We pray now for those that are weak. We pray for the ones that have had surgery. We pray for the sick. We just want you to continue to put your healing hand upon them. Please bless us now. Help us put away our cares and worries as we are now ready to hear your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi and welcome. It's an honor to uh, have been asked to speak to you today. I have a message called, A Lamp Unto My Feet. It was something that I had started out as writing for the bulletin, but I just couldn't narrow it down to keep it small enough for the bulletin. So when uh, Dale asked me to speak, I thought, well, I know exactly which thing that I, can, uh, that I have that I can speak on. So this is titled, A Lamp Unto My Feet. Well, first off, what is a lamp used for? Well, generally, when you think of a lamp, you think it's getting dark, you're sitting in your living room, so you turn on a lamp so you can see. But there's other kinds of lamps. We use lanterns when we camp. Street lights, they light the, the street like a lamp. And uh, we even have lamps on the front of our cars, our headlights, so we can see the road in front of us in the dark. So there's lots of kinds of lamps, not just the kind that sits on your end table in your living room, but lanterns, headlights, candles. Most people even have a flashlight on their cell phone nowadays. Anything we use that can give us light. So I looked up the word lamp in the dictionary. The dictionary.com says a lamp is any of various devices furnishing artificial light as by electricity or gas. Its second definition was a container for an inflammable liquid as oil, which is burned at a wick as a means of illumination. So even candles can be lamps. So why do we need to use a lamp? Well, according to what we learned in the dictionary, we need to use a lamp to give us light or to illuminate the dark. So, when I prepare lessons for students, I always want to get, have something to kind of get their minds thinking about what we're going to learn, what we're going to talk about. So, I've got a cartoon that I'm going to show that's going to kind of get us thinking about what we're uh, going to talk about today. So, in the cartoon, you see it's in the dark. She's shining a flashlight and she's telling the kids, you can't hide from me because I have my flashlight. Makes me think back when we were kids, we used to love to go down into the dark basement and play hide and seek in the dark. So my main verse today is going to be Psalms 119 verse 105. Psalms 119 verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. But well, we're gonna pose that as a question. We're gonna answer that question in this message today. So we're gonna say, what does the Bible mean when it says in Psalms 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path? Well, we remember that lamps give us light. They illuminate the dark. So we're gonna look at 1 John, 1 verses 5 through 7. 1 John 1 verses 5 through 7. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 
So in verse 5, we know that in him there is no darkness. God is light. And in verse 6, if we are his, but we still walk in darkness, we're really only fooling ourselves. In verse 7, if we are truly his and do his will, then we have him on our side, and he'll forgive us when we sin. So what does it mean, God is light? Psalms 139, verse 12. Look at Psalms 139, verse 12. Even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are a light to you. So right there it tells us that there is no darkness with God because God is light. So thinking about darkness and light, again, I looked at dictionary.com and found the meanings of darkness and light. Darkness, the state or quality of being dark, the absence or deficiency of light. This one I thought was interesting that it was in there, but it also defined darkness as wickedness or evil. And light, the definition was something that makes things visible. Illumination, bright, radiant energy. So there again, light is like a lamp, it's something that illuminates. The Bible, though, talks about light and darkness in a different way. So the biblical definition of light and darkness. We we'll start with darkness in the Bible. It's the world or people without God. And light, well, just like we read in that verse, God is light. And even his children are light. We'll get to that point in just a minute. We can see that God's word is a light to our path and it gives us guidance. Whenever or whatever we need, we know that God's word gives us guidance. So Psalms 119.105 says, His word is a light, meaning it's guidance to our path. I think of it like this. You're out walking on a very dark night. You can see, or you can't see where you're going because it's really dark out. So what do you do? You take out a flashlight and shine it down on the ground giving light to your path. Now you can see where you're going. Through his word, God guides us through our lives. Once we chose to be his, and we were baptized, God became our lamp and our guide. His light is what guides us through the darkness of the world. So let's find out more about God's light, okay? We are to share his light with the world. So I'm gonna look at Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. This kind of makes me think of the song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to Let It Shine. We are lights in the darkness for those around us. Thinking about when it says a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. I remember when we were traveling to Florida. It was about 1 a.m., the darkness of the night. We were heading through Georgia. And we were getting close to Atlanta. And we could tell we were getting close to Atlanta because in the horizon you could see the lights of the city. The closer we got, the brighter the lights got. And the closer, the brighter and brighter. Till soon we were engulfed in the lights of the city as well as a traffic jam at 1 a.m. As we finally got out of the city and drove away, 
We could see the lights of the city, city still behind us. It couldn't hide that city because it's because of its lights. I think of the the things you see on the the internet sometimes or on the TV where they show the uh, America at night from satellite view, and you could see the little clusters of lights where all the cities are. Because when you turn on a light, it doesn't just light up one small corner of the room, it lights up the entire room. We need to be a bright light shining God's goodness into the darkness of the world. We should never hide his light, but we should do everything to let it shine on others around us. I know I've written this before in the bulletin, and it's something I really strive for, and something I always told my daughters many times when they were growing up, and that's no matter where you are or what kind of day you're having, when you are around others, you need to let his light shine in a way that they notice. After you've checked out at the store, the cashier should have seen his light. After you've left the restaurant, your server should have seen his light. The library, amusement park, even at work, others should see his light shining from you. My daughters used to say, well, how can we do this? But we're all individual and we all have our own ways of figuring out how to do this. It's up to you to decide. Just think about this. How can you show others his light? I'm going to be reading from Ephesians 5. I'm going to read 6 through 10, but verse 8 is the uh, main verse I'm going to look at. But I'm going to get the whole context by reading verses 6 through 10. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the, lo in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consisted in all goodness and righteousness and truth trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Again, verse 8, For you were formerly darkness, before you were baptized, and became Christ's child, but now you are light, and you are the light of the Lord, and we should walk as children of light, so that people see the light. So the next thing is this, we're living in his light, and we need to continue to live in his light. So I've got another little cartoon here to kind of make you think about that point. And so we see the first one, the little boy's getting in the dark room, and he's getting ready to turn on the light. And when he does, he's dark. Just something to think about there. As we know that we can fall away and lose his light. As Christians, we have to work to stay in his light. So I'm going to read 2 Timothy 2, 15 through 19. 2 Timothy 2, 15 through 19. Be diligent. Right off, it tells us to be diligent. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God as workmen who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. But avoid worldly and empty chatter, for it will lead to further ungodliness. And their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hemius and Phileus, men who have gone astray from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already taken place, and they are upset with the faith of some. Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. So going back and looking through that, verse 15, we are to be diligent workers for God and not ashamed 
doing it. Verse 16, avoid things not of him, worldly or the darkness. Verses 17 and 18, when we fall away, we are in danger of losing our salvation, our future home in the kingdom of God. And verse 19, we are to keep our foundation firm with him and stay away from the wickedness of the world or the darkness. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 23 through 33. Verse 31 is the, the one I was wanting to really look at, but I'm going to get to, again get the whole context by reading verses 23 through 33. All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbor. Eat anything that is sold in the meat market without asking questions for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and all it contains. If one of the unbelievers invites you and you want to go, eat anything that is set before you without asking questions for conscience sake. But if anyone says to you, this meat is sacrificed to idols, do not eat it for the sake of the one who informed you and for conscious sake. I mean, not your own conscious, but the other man's. For why is my freedom judged by another's conscious? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I slandered concerning that for which I give thanks? Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to Jews or Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of the many, so that they may be saved. So again, the key verse, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. No matter what, you're supposed to do it for the glory of God. Looking deeper into that, then what you read should glorify God. What you listen to should glorify God. Where you go, everything you do should glorify God. Now that's a tall order for sure. And I know sometimes we have a hard time fulfilling that. We may turn on the TV and our program's on. And we know we probably shouldn't be watching, but we end up sitting there getting engulfed in it and watching the show. I'm glad that I have his light shining within me and have his forgiveness. I just need to remember to be thankful for him for all he does for me each day. It's been a while since we've met together in church, and we're lucky to be living in a time where we can come together virtually. Even though we have that, I'm sure that all of us often find it hard, and we struggle to keep his light shining, and we have to work to keep it shining bright in our lives. Don't be the one who extinguishes his light. Keep working, keep praising, and keep doing what you need to do to serve God. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Even in these tough times, when you may feel His light growing dim, remember your faith in Him. He will guide you, Keep his light shining bright within you. Philippians 4 6. Philippians 4 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Always pray, always talk to God. He's my light in this dark old world. Times right now are different, things aren't right. But I know that as long as I keep my faith, God is with me no matter what may happen because God is in control. 
which is the next point. Because his light shines, he is in control. There's two good verses to help us remember that God is in control. You probably want to write these verses down. The first one, Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And the next one, Isaiah 41, 10. Isaiah 41, 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Yeah, we're human. We'll worry and we'll fear, but we need to learn, which is to teach ourselves to trust God. These two verses, Romans 8, 28 and Isaiah 41, 10, are good ones to help us. When you begin to feel anxious, worried, or fearful, type them up, write them out, hang them someplace where you can see, put them on your refrigerator somewhere. When we hold his light within us and keep it shining bright, then we know he is there for us because God is in control. Why? Well, because he loves us. He offers his life to us out of his love, a love so big that he offered his only begotten son to die on the cross for us. We need to remember that showing God's love, just like he showed to us, is one of the best ways to shine his light. Thinking about God's love, there's a lot in the Bible about God's love. But I'm going to look at 1 John 4, verses 7 through 19. Kind of a lengthy scripture, but it's a really good one to teach us about God's love. So listen carefully to what it says. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who is born of God knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. For God is love. Powerful statement regarding God and love. By this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. Thus, we can have eternal life in the kingdom through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We should love like God does. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. You see, his light shines through us when we show love like he does. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Yes, Jesus is our Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. When we confess this and we're baptized, we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love. There it is again, God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. God is with us. By this, love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is so also, so also we are in this world. We are shining God's light to the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. Yes, God loved us first, even before we were born. He gave his only son on the cross. That is why we show love. 
God is love. Such a powerful statement. The light he gives us, and we are to shine, begins with his love. So again, our key verse today, Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. What have we learned answering the question, what does that mean? Well, we learned what a lamp is and what it's used for, and that's lighting up the darkness. We've learned that God is our light, our lamp, and the world is darkness. We learned that God's light guides us through the darkness of the world. We learned that his light is not just for us. We need to show it to the world and share it with the world. We should never hide his light from anyone. Others who see you should easily see his light shining from you. You may be the only Jesus someone sees. We learn to stay in God's light and don't fall away. It can easily fade. We learn to work for God and try to always do his will, his will. When we fail, he does forgiveness if we truly repent. We learn that God is in control. Do not worry and trust God. We learn that God is love. And we should also love just as God shows his love to us. So as you go out into the world, be that city on a hill. Don't hide his light under a basket. Just keep shining his light, because right now, the world really needs it. I'm going to close in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much that we have your light to shine from within us. We just pray that as we are continuing to go out, that we do find ways to shine his light unto those around us. Please be with us each and every day. Hold us close through this hard time. We just thank you again, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.